Hello all, I am Dr. Maya Dunne again coming with the chapter 3, Quantum Theory uh, and Electronic Structure of Atoms. This is a very important chapter. So let's see what are the important aspects or uh, the objectives of the, uh, this chapter. So the learning objectives for the course is you need to know the types of energies like kinetics and potential, the nature of the light, um, quantum theory, Bohr model, wave properties, and then we're going to go to the, um, the quantum mechanics, quantum numbers, and then some atomic orbitals. So if I go the types of energies, you need to know that energy is a capacity to do work or transfer heat. There are types of energies like kinetic energy, which is associated with motion, thermal energy, which is associated with the temp temperature changes, the motion of the atoms and molecules, potential energy, it's uh, energy, which is because you get the position, the chemical energy, the structural units of the chemical substances. So there are so many types of energies. Um, so the energy is... Um, Always, they cannot be destroyed or created. Only you can transfer from one form of energy from the one form to the other. The unit of energy is important. I mean, the SI unit for energy is joule. So the joule is um, its amount of energy possessed by 2 kilogram mass moving at a speed of 1 meters per second. So the 1 joule is called Newton meters. 1000 joules make one kilojoule and i'm going to the nature of light what is the visible light so the visible light is waves electromagnetic spectrum has all the waves you can think of the um you can think of that we can see around us so this electromagnetic spectrum made out of the um Waves including radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-ray and gamma rays. You see all the waves, they have some properties. The properties of the waves are the, they have the frequency and they have the wavelength. So the waves has properties. What are these properties? Frequency and wavelength. So the frequency is a number of cycles go in a per second. Wavelength. So if I draw a wave, that's going to be easier. Let me draw a wave and show you what it is. So this is my wave. So this is, the, I, have, I, draw, I will draw two waves. Okay, I have another wave. Two waves. So this wave has the, um, the from the wave A and wave B. My wave B has higher frequency because the number of, of cycles is faster in wave B but wave A. But wave A has a smaller frequency but longer the wavelength. Wave B has a smaller wavelength, long, higher frequency. So this shows that frequency and the uh, wavelength is inversely proportional. Higher the wavelength, lower the frequency. Higher the frequency, lower the wavelength. So frequency and the um, wavelength is inversely proportional. I show you that because all the waves, so if you see the radio waves, they have uh, the long wavelength, but very, uh, yeah, very uh, long wavelength and also very small frequency. But if you go to the higher, uh, the high energy waves like gamma rays, they have the wavelength is very small, nanometers, and then uh, the frequency is um, high. So that's the wave, uh, electromagnetic spectrum. I, I don't want you to memorize each of the waves with the frequency and the wavelength, but I want you to know the order. Like you need to know the radio waves has the lower, lowest energy than the FM. So if I ask you, arrange it. Radio waves comes first, microwaves, infrared ultraviolet x-ray so the lower energy the lower the frequency radio waves then go to microwaves ir uv like that so visible the visible light is only a small region of the electromagnetic spectrum visible light has colors red orange yellow green 
um, blue, indigo, violet. So from this, you need to know the colors of the rainbow. You need to know the colors. You need to know the order, which color has the highest energy, highest frequency, higher the frequency, higher the energy. So this purple has the highest frequency, highest energy. Red has the lowest frequency, lowest energy. But in other words, it has the longest wavelength. I want you to know that. And then, I told you this um, frequency and the wavelengths inversely proportional. So you can, so we come up our first equation, which is the um, C. So this is the um, mu. Sorry, I don't like mu. Mu is a frequency. It's a sign for frequency. Lambda is wavelength. So mu uh, indirectly proportional to lambda. So then you have to come up with the equation. We have, um, we can write using mu equals c over lambda. So, C equals, so C is the speed of light. Because you want to have a constant. If you want to make an equation, you need to make, you need to come with a constant. So, speed of light. So, C equals mu and, mu and lambda. So, this is our very first equation. This is how the equation comes up. Sorry, you can see that at the end. So C, so that's how we came to the equation C equals mu and lambda. And then this is the same thing we discussed. And then electromagnetic waves, they have the magnetic field and then the perpendicular electric field. There are certain uh, properties of the, um, the, the light, the waves. We call this as a constructive interference destructive interference. You can see this constructive when, uh, when the waves passing through a small slit. Um, these are the wave properties. If you go uh, sit in a river and this very, river is very peaceful and if you put a little uh, rock to the middle of the river, you see all the waves and some waves are bigger and some waves are going down. So that is the constructive interference is like the waves in the same wavelength like waves combine, it, you, you get the constructive interference. Waves distract, you get the destructive interference. So I have a question for you. Um, let me do the question. The one type of the laser used in the treatment of vascular skin lesions in a neodymium, neodymium, oh, yttrium, just a lot of names. Okay, laser. The wave, the wavelength that's commonly used in this treatment is this one they are giving you the wavelength and asking you the frequency so now we know the what is the equation we need to use here is because you know the speed of light speed of light is constant for the all the electromagnetic waves which is c into so c speed of light equals 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second that's the speed the sunlight coming to earth so this is the uh, speed of light, and then uh, we, there we have to find the lambda. You know our equation. Let me see that you write on it so you can understand it better. So let's see what is connected. Okay. So here um, I want to show you. So our equation. What is our current equation? Lambda, so my equation is lambda equal uh, mu, no, sorry, 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 not lambda, sorry, c equals mu lambda, right? So now I have to find the, um, sorry, no, sorry. Sorry. 
Uh, okay, it's this one. So my equation is this one, and then um, my lambda I have to find. So the I I know the free, uh, um, I know the wavelength, which is the five three two nanometers. I have to find the frequency. So frequency I want to isolate this term. So I divide both sides by lambda, lambda. And then lambda, lambda cancel, and I have mu equals C over lambda, right? So that's what I'm getting. So my C is 3 into 10 to the power negative 8. Sorry, 3 into 10 to the power 8, I'm sorry. Thank you. 3 into 10 to the 8 meters per second. And my um, lambda is given, which is, Five point. Um, actually, I have five hundred thirty-two nanometers. Now I want to convert five hundred thirty-two nanometers to meters. How do you convert nanometers to meters? You multiply by ten to the power negative nine. Five hundred. Um, so it's going to be five point three two into ten to the power negative seven meters. So meters, meters cancel out. You divide these two numbers, and you can get the frequency so in this type of calculations if so if, if our equation is c equals mu into lambda so always make sure you know one term and then you always know the speed of light you can rearrange the equation and find the other one but this question has one tricky point which is wavelength is given in the nanometers when the wavelength is given in the nanometers you have to convert into meters by dividing so the nanometers to meters you basically you divide by 10 to the power 9 but when you the division when you when you write it it's going to be 5.532 multiply by 10 to the power negative 9 so that's the um, end of this um, section and then we are moving to the quantum theory the quantum theory is basically in the quantum mechanics. Why we use in the quantum mechanics in GenChem 1, like to arrange, to see how electrons are arranged in the nuke, in an atom. So you know new electrons are around the uh, nucleus. So how this, I'm saying, okay, you have these six electrons. How is this six electrons arranged in a an atom some elements that can have 15 electrons how are these 15 are they in a one circle are they in certain levels so that's what the very basic understanding why we need to learn the quantum mechanics in the gen chem one level the quantum mechanics show you the quantum numbers quantum numbers nothing other than the electron orbitals which are the what is orbital? It's a circle, right? The circles around the nucleus, which you can see how the electrons arrange, the arrangement of electrons. So a little bit of a quant uh, the quantum, the quantum says it's like quantified or packed. So I always say the electrons are arranged in a certain energy levels around it. So electron has a certain path. To go around the nucleus when it electrons um so if I I'm talking about like this kind of a picture here. So our um so this is the nucleus and around nucleus these electrons these are the orbitals so electron can um stay here and then when the electron always it has a specific position from me when it goes from here to here it's it always go from one orbital to the other the electron is not stopping in between now it always go from one energy level to the other energy it basically jump from one energy level to the other one um, and it needs certain uh, certain energies not in stay in between and um so that's what we call it quantum mechanics. And then the energy of an um, certain, um, you know, I told you when I teach you the electromagnetic radiation, that energy is uh, always higher the frequency, higher the energy. And then um, it's how to show the wave energy of an each wave. Like what is the energy of the radio wave? 
what is the energy of the microwave? We use this equation E equals x mu. E is energy, h is Planck's constant, it's a constant, and then mu is frequency. Higher the energy, higher the frequency. I want to show you um, the photoelectric effect. Is it's another term, like another phenomenon. When the light shine on a metal surface, metal start emitting electrons. That is called photoelectric effect. Photo is light. Light contains energy. So that's what it's called, photoelectric effect. So if you want to quantify the energy of that incoming light, you can use that E equals H mu equation. Always in order for that incoming light to emit electrons from the metal surface, it should have the minimum energy. We minimum that light should have minimum energy. In other words, it has the minimum threshold that call minimum sorry, the threshold frequency. The, like I mean minimum free I'm sorry so the in order to the incoming light to release the electrons from the metal surface the the incoming light has the specific energy specific energy mean incoming light has the minimum like specific frequency we call that frequency as threshold frequency so always in order to calculate the um, energy of that incoming light we call e photon h mu so, um, high frequency gives high energy. And I would go, I would stop from the, um, here. So here, it shows, what is this? E equals H mu and W. If the incoming light has high energy than the, the required one to emit electron, the other one convert to the kinetic energy. So that's what it says. So, it's, it's like a, I know the picture is a little complicated. Let me explain you easy here. I'm going to be photo electric effect. Okay, this is a metal. This is my metal. My light is coming in red color. Light shine on a metal surface. It emits electrons. It emits electrons. So it emits electrons. So this is my incoming light. This is my metal surface. It emits electrons. In order for this light to emit electrons, it should have the minimum energy for that incoming wave. Incoming wave has a minimum energy means that incoming wave has a certain frequency. And then when that light shine on a metal surface, it start emitting electrons. So think about you have, um, um, think about, um, okay, the yellow light. So the, the visible from the, not uh, let's say orange light. Orange light, you, are you in order to, uh, so I have a question for you. Orange light, you need at least orange light to emit electron from the metal surface. Okay. You need at least orange light from the visible spectrum to emit electrons from this metal surface. So now I'm saying, now I have red light uh, waves. Do you think the red light waves will emit electrons from the metal surface? Yes or no? Think about it. My answer is no. Because red light has less energy than orange light. The minimum frequency is orange. But red does red comes doesn't emit electrons. But if the green comes, it of course it's emit electrons. And also where the extra energy, extra energy convert to the Kinetic energy, that's what I show you. Energy equals H mu plus W is kinetic energy, that extra energy convert to kinetic energy. Okay. So that's about it, about the photoelectric effect. Mm. And then the emission spectrum. Okay. And then I think I'm going to stop the part one from here.